Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Turn of Events. So happy to have you here. I'm Annette Nafe, the CEO and Creative Director of Nafe Productions. We specialize in corporate, social, nonprofit, and weddings. And if you are a wedding or event planner and you are looking to start your own business or you're struggling in your current business, you must join us over on our Facebook group at Event Planner Society. Uh, great space for people who are just starting out, um, lots of collaborations. I give tons of tips. I have an amazing team who helps out with any of your questions, and we would love to see you over there at Event Planner Society. So I'm excited today to have with us Julie Livingston. She's a wonderful friend and known her for many, many years. She's the president and of Want Leverage Communication as an and is a New York City-based public relations and LinkedIn marketing expert. We are going to talk about um, LinkedIn tips for business owners, which is super, super important. If you are trying to get clients, and I know many of the wedding and event planners who are on, who are on my Facebook group are struggling all the time to get clients. It's, it's a very difficult time right now, although people are starting to go back into doing live events. Um, but there are tips, lots of marketing tips. I give tons of those. I'm going to be doing a workshop soon that you'll want to get into. So you need to get into the um, Facebook group and join me there. And I'll be marketing all kinds of stuff about how to get clients. So she, um, Julie specializes in elevating executive presence by developing their thought leadership and media placement as, uh, as a means of strengthening competitive advantage, increasing st stakeholder engagement and retaining talent. And I just love you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's great to see you, Annette. Great to be here. <laughs> I know. It's been forever. We used to market together in person. And now yeah. we, our group has kind of kind of fizzled away, although we do stay in communication oh, yeah. with each oh, other yeah. on another group. But you know, live, live networking kind of has drifted away these days. And I've kind of, I'm starting to miss it. I want to get back to it, but... <laughs> So, um, so I'm so excited for you to be here. Please tell everyone a little bit about you before we get started. Sure. I'm, I've been in public relations and marketing for decades, uh, working with companies and brands and C-level leaders to help them to establish themselves as industry authorities and really become known as experts in their field. Yeah. More recently, I have parlayed my public relations experience in counseling, you know, executives on industry crises and issues and uh, coaching them on for media interviews to uh, really focusing my work on LinkedIn. You know, it's the world's biggest networking platform and it's become increasingly important for business owners and business leaders to have an important presence on LinkedIn to showcase who they are. I mean, they are the, the face of their brand, of their company, and kind of what they stand for, um, right. whether it's that they're an expert in a particular area in their industry, they want to be known for the way they lead, for their emotional intellig intelligence, or their transformative style of leading people, for empathy, and what they've accomplished. I help them do that on LinkedIn. Right, right. So I, I know you've been in public relations for a very long time, but what sparked your interest in LinkedIn? Well, it's interesting. I've been in my own business. This is my third time. So I was kind of zigzagged in and out of the corporate field. Yeah. And a few years ago, um, in resurrecting my consultancy, I started in increasing my own presence on LinkedIn as a way of attracting new clients uh, and partners. And a few people started noticing mm -hmm. and they really liked my content. And one of my uh, one, somebody I knew um, who hadn't, but hadn't talked to in years. So it's a LinkedIn is a great way to reignite mm -hmm. relationships that have been dormant, but also to reestablish and make new connections. Um, so she reached out to me and said, you know, I've been seeing you all over LinkedIn. I really love your content. And our chief customer officer really could use help in creating more of a community among our thousands of employees virtually, you know, because she obviously cannot get out and meet every single person. Right. Um, we want to establish ever since for business owners and C-level executives. 
Right, right. I've been on LinkedIn a really, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the platform. Um, yeah. You know, I developed their content strategy and their personal brand. So we identify what, you know, what areas they really um, know the best and can speak well, well about the best. And we stick to those content lanes, I call them. And so I develop their content um, in their voice. So it sounds, you know, authentic and genuine. Right. And then I actually do the posting for them and the management of it. Okay. That's great. That's great. The, the problem is, is I am also on LinkedIn, but you know, I'm all over social media and I have been for many, many years. It's so hard to, it's good to have people like you out there because I can't manage it. I cannot run my business and also help wedding and event planners and do all that coaching and then run all of my marketing. So I definitely, you and I should probably talk because I definitely <laughs> need people, see people like you. And I'm always nervous. I get so many emails now on LinkedIn since COVID happened, LinkedIn really ramped up. And I get so many emails on LinkedIn that I, I just can't keep up with it. So I always feel like I'm missing something and I really need to get somebody to help me manage all of that. So. Interesting. Yeah, it's really been crazy. I didn't get that many messages before and now I get so many, but I do post a lot on LinkedIn. I'm kind of guilty of not, you know, being in there as much as I should be and, and engaging. That's so important. You really need to do that. I know to build relationships, that's with any any kind of marketing. So um, it's great to know that you're out there to help that. So um, how do public relations and LinkedIn complement one another? Well, in my public relations, public relations is all about cultivating your image and reputation mm -hmm. um, on various platforms, right? So that the, the the key target audiences, your key stakeholders, so whether that's your investors, employees, your board of directors, strategic partners that you work with, and of course potential clients, um, can see you, right? And 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 see you in a public space and. Very often that has to do with getting featured in the news and news media, like newspapers, magazines, digital platforms, um, and through speaking engagements. And so I've been doing that for many, many years and coaching executives in the process on how they should talk about industry crises that happen to occur, mm -hmm. um, you know, how best to go out there so that it does not negatively impact their reputation. Um, I've actually served as a media spokesperson myself doing a lot of television and print interviews over the years. So I kind of know how to tell a story in just the right way, um, in a concise way, in a way that's very uh, authentic and um, believable and credible. Mm -hmm. so I know how to build reputation. And LinkedIn is really, to me, it's just another marketing platform for building your reputation and your executive presence. And I think that many leaders have kind of ignored it or have underutilized it, but now is the time to really um, take advantage of, of the visibility and credibility that you can build on LinkedIn with just the right content, whether it is you know written content. I've also been doing a lot of LinkedIn live videos. Mm -hmm. um, and just started doing that for a client of mine, actually, where I'm running a series of interviews with members of their organization to, again, underscore their credibility and why you should become a member. So I think that, you know, now is the time really to focus on this particular social media platform, which can elevate your credibility and industry authority and, and get, give you a chance to really promote your competitive advantage in an ongoing way. Right, right. So um, what are the benefits of LinkedIn for business owners? Oh my gosh, Annette, there are so many benefits for business owners. You know, the time is to get out from, you know, behind your company and really act as the number one brand ambassador for your firm. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you start, first of all, you need an exciting profile. And so I do work with clients on evaluating their current LinkedIn profile and kind of warm, I call it warming it up yeah. so that you come across as human and likable and um, somebody who's, who has something to share. I help, I help leaders kind of, you know, identify the areas of expertise that they have 
And then we develop the content based on those, those specific areas that really underscore their brand and who they are um, in a way that is different than their competitors. So business owners need to stand out against their competitors, right? Right. Well, you might have competitors who are really um, outperforming you on LinkedIn, and that's not necessarily a good thing. You know, yeah. you really want to be out there and touting your own competitive advantages and why you are the which you should be the preferred vendor for or resource for com other companies to go to and you need to do that in a consistent and kind of you know a genuine kind of way not it is not to be self promotional at all right because that is a turn off and i have found that for business owners when we have gone out with content that is very self promotional um it falls flat people right. don't respond to it so but when you when you're a business owner and you go out on LinkedIn and kind of share, you know, things that you're dealing with on a regular basis, um, how you made certain decisions, your approaches to your approach to different situations, it really shows who you are inside. And people want to connect with people they like. You're right. So that really gives you a fantastic opportunity as a business owner to really outshine your competitors and be seen for you know, your individuality and what you bring to a particular industry sector. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're selling any kind of a program or doing any, trying to sell your services in any way, they have to get to know you. And like you said, they have to know, like, and trust you as they, that's been said for a hundred years, but it's so true. You have to build relationships and um, you know, we are actually live on LinkedIn right now, which is exciting. I remember when I first got accepted, <laughs> it took me a year and a half. I had to write uh seven times. They wouldn't let me. It was crazy. And I post a lot. So one of the tips and, you know, a lot of people who are watching are in the event industry, because obviously that's the industry I'm in. So there's a lot of wedding event planners that are watching and um, just giving tips on, you know, how sure. to top three tips of whatever it is, how to set a sure. table or what to look for when you're looking for a venue, or there's a million things you could talk about. Oh my God. And now if, yeah. so if you switch up your LinkedIn profile if you have more than 500 followers, I'll say that first, yeah. you might want to consider switching your profile to what's called creator mode on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And that does give you automatic um, access to using LinkedIn live mm -hmm. that we're doing now. And a lot of other, um, a lot of other enhancements to your profile, like a featured section, which is sort of like a theatrical marquee where mm -hmm. you have different, like a, sort of a slide carousel where you could feature news articles where you've been quoted or other video or other written content. I like to, when I post for clients, I like to feature the daily post in their featured section because it keeps it nice and fresh and right. um, it gets people's, you know, it attracts people's interest and gets them to come back to look for more. Right. And if you're writing, if you're writing blogs, post some tips from those blogs, break it down. You can send out, you know, daily different posts and also put your, you know, you can feature the blog in your, in your profile. Um, so there's many different ways. And I also take, um, lots of articles from my industry and I post those and I stopped doing those for a short period of time. And so many people wrote me and said, I love your articles on the industry. Now I didn't, no, that's great. I didn't write them, but they're so good. There's so many great articles and so much. The industry changes nonstop, uh, like all the time. So um, it's great to keep stuff out there, but it keeps me visible. So anytime you're putting something on your platform, obviously it's, it's got to represent who you are. It can keep you visible. In well, you're curating that content, yeah. right? You are, right. You are uh, selecting content mm -hmm. that you right. know will have value to others. And that says a lot, that is very reflective of you. I will say though, as a business owner, when you are posting on LinkedIn, one of the important things to do in every post is at the end to have what's called a call to action message. Yeah. And that's sort of a question to kind of get, you know, kind of get people thinking about what you posted and hopefully to get them to comment, like, or repost what you've, what you've put out there, but it really does help with engagement. Right. And what you can also do is take the article, put it on your website or your blog and feature, you know, make sure you showcase who wrote it and give, you know, 
shout out to them, but it brings you back to your website and you link it through, you know, you can link it out throughout all of your platforms. So it's still bringing it around and getting them on visible on your website. Yeah. yeah. Um, and don't forget, don't forget to, to tag the, the media outlet that you're sharing the article from and, or the reporter that correct. will give you more amplification. But, you know, also I find that this is a common error on LinkedIn. People will often put the link to an article uh, in the post. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, the article itself pops up as a graphic, which is great. Okay. So then you can delete that link. You don't need to leave the link in the actual post copy mm -hmm. because it's okay. already connected and it's already popped up as an image. So just remember that it just leaves it a little bit more, more clean. Yeah. And the other thing that I heard was, um, to take the link and not put it in the post itself, put it in a comment because you're going to get, I tested that and it was amazing. I had like a hundred, you know, people look at it more than if I had put the link inside the post itself. That so is, that is true. And it's a mix, it's a mixed bag. There are different reasons to do it. First of all, LinkedIn doesn't want you to leave LinkedIn. So if you're linking out to another, like the wall street journal of the New York times, they're not going to, they won't recognize it as strongly as if you put the link right. in the first comment. However, sometimes you just want, uh, you know, the graphic from the article to pop or the resource to kind of pop up because it just looks better. It looks and, nice. Yeah. 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 You're right. So, okay. So how do you raise your profile on LinkedIn? Well, first of all, I would say, look at your profile from an outsider's perspective. And you might even call in a colleague to look at your profile also and give you some input, but make sure that you're really using that top header section effectively and dramatically. Mm -hmm. So that is what I call prime real estate. Mm -hmm. So there's, first of all, have a really nice headshot mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to necessarily be a professional headshot, although that is preferred. It could just be a nice snapshot. But make sure that you could see your face, especially your eyes, and that you're you look happy. And um, <laughs> yeah. you'd be surprised in that. I you see a like lot it. of very different kinds of profile photos. Yes. And that the background is, you know, kind of simple. But that area right behind your headshot is really a fantastic, like a marquee to which you can put some kind of graphic. Mm -hmm. or even some language that explains what your business is about, like one sentence. So that's one thing. And then in the, the actual, that top profile section, um, you know, make sure that your title is correct and that it also tells a little bit about your story. So if you just, if you're an account executive, you might, you might embellish on that a little bit. Account executive with a passion for blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It's based on your industry or expertise. Right. I just find that it, it makes you stand out a little bit more. Right. Um, if you're in creator mode, as I said, you can, and it's free to do that on LinkedIn. Um, you can, you will get a section that's called talks about, and that helps you that provides you with the opportunity to list five hashtags, which makes you more searchable on LinkedIn. So for mine, it says talks about public relations, LinkedIn marketing, um, media relations, and different things that I that I do. Right. Um, so look at the talks about section. And in addition, if you're in creator mode, so there are a lot of benefits to it. You can also now add a URL to your preferred platform. Maybe that's your website or a landing page that people could go to. So again, it ends up being right in the top of your profile. So people see that right away. Um, I like to make sure that where it says contact, that you provide an email address that you check um, and that you provide an email address at all <laughs> because yeah. a lot of people don't provide an email. They don't necessarily check their LinkedIn messages and so they miss business opportunities because of that, because they didn't provide the another email for them for people to get in touch. So make sure that make sure that you do that. Um, and then you know, so look at look at all of those elements and make sure that they're really in alignment with your personal brand and your business. 
And then as you go down, you'll see your about section. Now there you have about 2000 words, I believe, to really talk about yourself, but make sure that the first paragraph of that area is very concise and really um, positions you the way you want so that people don't read beyond that. They know who you are and what you do. Right, right. Great stuff. Really great stuff. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll we'll answer them for you. Okay, so how do you build a content strategy? So one of the ways that I work with clients to build a content strategy is to have a conversation and to kind of get to know them. I also will do a Google search or just a simple search to see if they have been featured in the news before, if they have given presentations or or talks where I could kind of get a sense of who they are and what they typically speak about with authority. So that will kind of clue me in a little bit. And then we'll talk about what they want to be known for. It might be a little different than what's already out there. And I will also ask them about their competitors. Who are other leaders or companies in the space? And we will do a competitive analysis to see how those companies and the leaders of those companies are positioning themselves. So what are my clients' competitive advantages? How are they different mm -hmm. than their competitors? What makes them of greater value? Why should people want to purchase their products or services? You know, and these are very nuanced things. Um, so it's really important to get to the crux of that. And that, that could take a while. It's kind of like an archaeological dig, you know, Annette, like you're just kind of digging deeper and deeper until you get their essence, right? Right. Um, and once we identify uh, what they want to be known for, I will kind of coalesce that. So for a, 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 a woman who is the CEO of a management consulting firm, for example, um, after I spoke to her for a while, got to know her a bit, saw where she, where she had spoken at public events and given media interviews in the past. It was all about company culture. She was really a forerunner and a thought leader in that space, but people didn't really know her. So uh, company culture was one thing. Right. And so a lot of the posts that I would devise for her were about how to create a positive company culture, mm -hmm. you know, or what a poor company culture looks like and what are the what are the uh, ramifications of that? You know, uh, lower employee retention, uh, lack of collaboration, et cetera. So company culture was one. And the more I got to talk to her, I realized that she she possessed a type of emotional intelligence, which is actually one of the top skills that business owners and leaders um, should have today to be successful. And you'll see it, emotional intelligence and empathy, compassion, all three of those areas are being talked about in, in the news everywhere as the top leadership skills. So she really exemplified that emotional intelligence. So that was another one. So we had two so far, mm -hmm. company culture and emotional intelligence. The other thing was that <clears throat> her company was a remote first firm. And, you know, in the, in a digital world and post COVID working remotely, having a remote team, a fully remote team is kind of an emerging, um, emerging business model. Mm -hmm. And so, um, she was also able to speak about remote work yeah. and create and a combination creating a positive remote work culture. Yeah. Right. So those were the three uh, subject areas that we would continually post about for her. On occasion, we would also post about mental health, another very hot button topic right now mm -hmm. um, that leaders and business owners are talking about because it's an attraction. I mean, you know, people, if people want to work with your company as a client or want to become employees, they want to know that they'll be cared for and they will have that they'll have a healthy work life balance. So mental health is another very important content area. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's how I kind of make it happen and identify those, those content lanes that I think will um, underscore a person's individuality and their brand. Right. So if somebody is just starting out, like a lot of 
people in my Facebook group, event and wedding planners are just starting out. What are some tips just to like get them started and putting some content together? I mean, I can give a few. Sure. I'd like to for you to share. Sure. That. Well, first of all, I think you should have a LinkedIn profile. And if you do, you know, the, the great thing about it is that nothing is written in stone. You can constantly reshape it and tweak it. I love that. So it doesn't mean that anything you write is there forever. Right. So don't, don't overthink it. You know what I mean? You can always go back to it, but I would use that top portion of your profile, having a nice headshot, mm -hmm. um, having a great looking background behind the headshot with maybe five words about what you do, you know, event planner in Kansas city, or you, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> but we specialize in weddings and corporate events, something that indicates what you do. Um, that's an instant get for people, I think is really critical. And making sure that your contact info includes your email address, one that you check regularly. Mm -hmm. Being in the event business, I think having a, 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 you know, an ongoing, a growing portfolio of photographs of events that you've executed is critical. Yep. And LinkedIn is a great platform to share those photos on. So I would start by uh, creating a content calendar, identifying those areas of expertise that you want to talk about. Um, I don't know. Let's say it's um, problem solving, right? If you were going to look at event planning from a hundred thousand foot view, what do you do? You solve problems for companies, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, I you, always say I'm not an event planner. I'm a problem solver. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Annette. So I would say, you know, problem solving, um, and then, you know, logistics, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe organization, something like that. And so okay. those are the, those are three content areas. And then I would start by, um, I would start by posting at least once a week mm -hmm. and make sure it's on a Wednesday morning. That is the most highly trafficked time on LinkedIn. I'd say between eight and 1030 in your time zone. So start mm -hmm. by sharing, um, you know, we, we, you know, we did this event uh, last week, or you could just talk about something, you know, and how you solve problems. And then you use the photo from a recent event, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could kind of point to some of the um, elements of that event where you solve problems so that people could actually see what you do. And remember to end that post with a question, you know, how do you approach event planning? How have you solved um, this kind of logistical problem issue mm -hmm. so that people will start to engage? The other thing is that when you're post before you start posting, I create a list of hashtags so that you're searchable and findable on LinkedIn. So look up and you could do that in the search bar on LinkedIn, put in the hashtag and then the word event or events mm -hmm. and see how many thousands of followers there are. I like to identify hashtags that have more than 10,000 followers. However, that's not to say that you shouldn't sometimes use hashtags with less than, you know, with less than 10,000 or less than 50,000 in between 10 and 50,000, because mm -hmm. you might be hitting a particular niche area that you service in your event business. Right, right. Great tips, great tips. And I know that, Listen, if you're looking for corporate clients, LinkedIn's a great place to be, you know, search for um, companies that are like the senior vice president of events or the director of events, like those type of titles, those people, I get jobs from companies who have event company, you know, they have an event team, but they just need additional help or their event team is working on something and they have, they can't do the gala that's coming up. So that's right. Um, you, you can know, start by following them. So following you so them, build follow them. Now, when you follow somebody, when you go to their profile and it will say, or for you, the button says follow, Yeah. make sure that you also click the bell. There's a bell icon to the right of their profile photo. Mm -hmm. That will notify you every time they post. So if you really want to keep track, you could just follow. But if you really want to keep track of somebody important and what they post so that you can comment and start building a relationship with them, yeah. ring the bell. <laughs> That's a great tip. I didn't know about that, actually. So <laughs> that changes so much over there. So, you never know. so um, really, really great information. And you definitely want to comment and if, and also if you're in Facebook groups, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, LinkedIn groups, there are LinkedIn groups that you can get into and 
get yourself in there and create yourself as an authority and just answer questions or someone could post, you know, like there's a lot of industry uh, groups where I get in sometimes and they're looking for someone to help them with an event in New York and they're not there and they, they can't do it or whatever. I've gone in and I've gotten work that way. So there's many, you just want to keep that's a great, engaged. that's such a great idea. Annette. And you know, one of the best ways for people who are new to the platform or who have not really developed their presence on LinkedIn is to start commenting um, with substance. Yes. Beyond, Oh, that's a great post. Yes. No you're going to get rated more highly in the LinkedIn algorithm when you really give a thoughtful comment on what somebody has written about. So maybe right. two, two sentences or three sentences max um, would will start to raise your profile over time. So if you wanted to start by posting original content one day a week and then just commenting on other people's posts one day a week, that's a really good way to get the momentum building on the platform. Right. It doesn't take long at all. And you can do it from your phone. So we're all on our phone all the time. Um, but one thing I want to ask is, and I think I just lost it. Oh, so if I was to have someone like your company come in and help with my the strategy of my marketing and all of that, uh, how does it work? Because like, I've heard that if I have someone other than me go into my platform, LinkedIn's going to, you know, cut, shut me down or they don't allow no. other people. So how does that work? Generally the client will share their password with me. And the first time I log in, they will get, um, LinkedIn will reach out to them and give them a code. Okay, good. Which they have to share back with me, but usually after the first time that doesn't really happen. Okay. Um, and LinkedIn also has better analytics uh, capabilities now on the platform. So you could see what content, what posts are doing, performing well, and what, you know, which ones are not, not as strong. So that's, mm -hmm. that's helpful. I also use an outside platform called shield app to do that. It has a little bit more on the analytics side, okay. but I would say just dip your toe in the water and start, start increasing your increasing the number of connections that you have on LinkedIn yeah. because more than 500 is a lot better than less. Yeah. Um, and keep working on that, you know, every week, try to spend like 10 minutes a day, just right. making new contacts and connections. I have over 10,000. I don't <laughs> know. And, but I, I feel like, and this is another point is you want to make sure you're connecting with people that listen, I have a ton of vendors that want to connect with me and I love all my vendors. I can't do the business without them. But I don't get work from vendors 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and, you know, so, and uh, there's so many and marketers and wanting to, you know, SEO my website and all of that stuff. I get hundreds and hundreds of those. So I do connect. There were times when I was just connect with everybody. Um, but I think there's probably a better strategy than just connecting with everyone. Um, so, you know, that's something you else. You can definitely be somewhat selective, but I would say, just keep building your audience right. um, so that more people know, can know about you when you do post. Yeah, for sure. Because it's word of mouth. My whole business is word of mouth. Just you recently, you know, we've met, we've built a relationship and you just referred me to somebody and, you know, it's, and you referred me to a couple of people and that's how it is. You build relationships totally. over it's the totally years. It's totally that way. It's but you know what? Years. Keep keep refreshing your profile too. Remember that you can post your event photos in you know in this featured section if you're in LinkedIn Creator mode, but also under each each experience that you have in your work background, you can. There's a place for media, yeah. Doesn't, but it doesn't have to be an article. It could just be a photo that you have from an event, and then you could write something yeah. to describe it underneath. You're so reminding me that I have to go in and update stuff. And I just did new photos, so I have to go change ah. new photo. <laughs> just, you know so what? It just keeps your profile looking fresh yes, and exciting. Yes. And I made so many it teaches here. people more about what you do and what you're about. Yeah. And I have so many pictures of so many events. You know, after a while, you get so busy, you forget all that marketing stuff because you know, you're, you're kind of in a rhythm now. I'm 13 years in with my business. So there you go. I'm but very you know what? Yeah. You just gave me a great idea, Annette. When I was talking about the, the top portion of your profile behind your headshot, mm -hmm. that photo, and I think it's a landscape format. It's horizontal. It is. Yeah. You could get a photo of you, the event planner at an event mm -hmm. 
in involved in your work that and put use that as your background photo that instantly telegraphs people right. what you do. Right, right. It's and then great, you could lay some copy over that. But yeah. I I really I've used that for a few of my clients. And it's an easy photo to stage or have somebody snap of you while you're actually pr producing an event. It shows I have, you I do it have shows you in charge. Wholesome. That's a good idea. I've got a few of them that I'll have to check out. Okay, good. So let's talk about um, how can you leverage LinkedIn for marketing events? Well, every time that you're planning an event, whether it's a LinkedIn Live or a presentation, a webinar, or some other kind of in-person event, uh, you can actually create an event just like you do on Facebook mm -hmm. and it will um, allow you to upload a photo. And I'm just trying to remember, I think it's 480 pixels mm -hmm. or a 16 by nine ratio in terms of the photo layout. Right. If you use Canva to create graphics, you can resize the photo there to do that, that for you. So you need a header photo for the event. And then you just put in all the other details and it will automatically signal people in your network that you have an event coming up. You also have the opportunity, the ability to um, accept RSVPs for that event. You could try right. doing that, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And it sends out reminders too. So right. I think the day before and maybe an hour before the event takes place, it's a great tool. It is event on the radar of people you want to see. It. Yes. And so we, anytime we do an event, unless it's a private personal event that I can't really talk about, sometimes that happens. Uh, we market every single event and many times we, and it's marketing us, right? So it's showcasing your business. You're talking about the client that you have. Um, and we market throughout the whole time leading up to the event, which also helps to get people to the event. So if we're doing a fundraiser and they're trying to, you know, get donations for the fundraiser or people to attend, we've had many times where we've um, filled, you know, put butts in seats as they say, and uh, through our marketing. So it showcases you and it's just kind of a, a, you know, killing two birds here with one stone as they say. Yeah. And then so. don't forget though, after the event, there's also an opportunity to market. So, right. you know, capture some of those photos, create a simple little video or slide carousel. You can also post a carousel on LinkedIn. I so need someone to help me with that. I have so many pictures and so many events that I haven't talked about because, you know, you get you get one events done and then you run to the right, next one. You're on to the next one. I'm on to the next one. And I have so many amazing things. So I need to start doing that. I've got to get somebody to help me with that. So that's try okay. to do that once a month or every quarter. And you'll yeah. see that it just really gives people a bird's eye view of what you're capable of. Yeah, I definitely have to do that. So that's a great idea. And it's so easy now. They have so many, you know, you can get on. Yeah the way you can create these, these videos is so easy now with all of them. Um... I actually use a graphic designer um, who I found on Upwork to do this. I'm sure you could find one on Upwork or Fiverr. I, Cause okay. I'm not, I'm not an expert in using right. Canva or other graphic programs. Right. So I've just taken that off my plate. Yeah. And you should know what, if you're not an expert in something, you know, stay in your lane. <laughs> I've always said that I love to delegate, although I do love Canva. I'd love to get in there and play around sometimes. Um, but, uh, and it's you very- You can't do everything and you, you can't, can't be an expert everything. in everything. No, no, and so I have a team and they, believe me, I use them. They're fantastic. So, and I'm always adding to it because, you know, yeah. I've even got, you know, everyone has to help me with everything here. All right. So um, what are your top tips for enhancing your LinkedIn profile? And I think you talked about those, but let's kind of review that. Again. Absolutely. First of all, make sure you have a good headshot for your yeah. photo and use that top area, that background uh, to your headshot photo um, with a compelling graphic, perhaps perhaps of you executing an event in some way, mm -hmm. speaking to an audience, if you've given a presentation, it mm -hmm. shows you as an authority and then lay some content over that right. about maybe five words about what you do so that instantly people understand what you're about. Right. Um, Definitely make sure that your contact button has an email address that you check regularly. Yes. And that you're either using creator LinkedIn creator mode to showcase um, photos of your work in that top carousel section. But if not, make sure that in your work experience area that you're using the media area, because let's say, you know, 
if I, if you look at my profile under what Julie Livingston want leverage communications, my work experience under want leverage has a media section where I can upload photos or articles that I've been featured in or mm -hmm. that I've written um, in that area too. So that again, you want to capture people's attention as they kind of go through, go down your profile. Chances are they may not make it till the very end. Mm -hmm. So that top portion is really, really critical. Right. And in, and referrals, what, what you, there's a recommendations, right? There's a section in there. Yes. For, so you know, every you time you produce an event, don't be shy. People expect it and they're flattered. Ask them if, ask your clients if they'll give you a LinkedIn recommendation. Mm -hmm. Very often clients don't have the time. So I end up writing uh, recommendations for myself and then they tweak it and they, um, they actually write it. LinkedIn has, um, I don't have the link right here, but if you do a search and for LinkedIn recommendation, you, they'll tell you, they'll ex instruct you on how to do it. And it's very easy for people to give a recommendation. It's, and just keep that going. And then yeah. you can use those testimonials on your website, on your website in your email right. marketing, wherever you need, or even in yeah. your posts. Right. Yeah. You're, it's very, you can use it all over the place, but it's very simple. You just, if you're connected with them on LinkedIn it, you go down to that section, you click the button, you put in their name and it's, it, they come up and then you just send Very them a simple. note, please, you know, please, uh, would you mind giving me a recommendation? So, and they, Definitely. by that point, I've already told them that. So they, they're expecting it to come, but yeah, it's a really great place to have that as well. Um, all right. So how do you increase your LinkedIn followers? Uh, we, we talked a little bit about this earlier. I have so many people that are, I don't know if they're following me or they're connected to me. So those are different. So they're very different. So, so connections are people you, you know, um, and there are different um, levels. So there's a first degree connection. That's somebody, you know, and you've, they've accepted your connection request. And then um, there are, there are, um, you know, your contacts, which will be a, a higher number people, you know, people that you, that are in your network, but you may not have that one-on-one -on -one kind of relationship with. Um, if you want people to follow you, you should follow them first. So that's always a good idea. Follow the people who are thought leaders in your space or who you'd like to do business with. Start commenting on their posts and, um, you'll see that it builds a relationship over time with them. They're going to start to notice that you're regularly uh, commenting on what they're saying. You're mm -hmm. kind of jumping into this conversation, a mm -hmm. virtual conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's and then great. spend time expanding your network, making new connections um, all the time so that you're sending out invitations to connect. Mm -hmm. um, look at, look at, um, look at who is, look at the people you are connected with and see who's in their contact network that you'd like to connect with. If there are, if they, um, any of their second degree connections, it's probably a good chance that they'll also connect with you. Right. Right. And I've had people reach out and say, you're connected to Julie Livingston. Do you know her? Are you friends with her? Like, you know, other people. And if I'm not, even if I'm not, I feel like I'm connected. So you, it kind of opens the door to be able to refer to somebody. So, Definitely. you know, I, I always feel like, you know, Hey, we're connected on LinkedIn. My friend Lisa is looking for la 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 la. Would you mind talking to her? And I think you're, you're kind of already in a family. It feels like, right. So you're, I think that's a great way of putting it. And if you're, if you don't know somebody and it's kind of cold, yeah. um, try to do that with people who are a second degree connection to mm -hmm. you. Right. It'll be harder to connect with somebody who's a third degree and the line I usually use in my, um, and, and you should add a note when you want to connect with somebody, it's, it gives you the option to add a note. There is a higher percentage of people who will accept your invitation when there's a personal note attached mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So what's the best way we're almost done here, which I, I can't believe it. So it goes by so fast wow. and I could talk forever, but what's the best way of feeding into the uh, LinkedIn algorithms? So you get noticed because obviously that's what we want, right? Yeah. Well, you know, definitely um, post um, with credibility, right? Really put your own insights into the post, link out to articles, um, and uh, resources that other people, you know, can use. Um, if you, you can experiment by not including links in your post, 
but at the bottom of your post, you could say, read the article here. I usually put an emoji that has the finger pointing down yeah. and it says in the first comment. And then in the first comment, you can put the link. Um, that kind of gets you some more points on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. No, that's good, good stuff. So just being consistent, right? Be consistent. And you know, the other thing, Annette, that I will say is that I've really become so comfortable with using emojis in a very tactical, in a very um, strategic way. Mm -hmm. So I use them from Emojipedia, but I use, you know, even colored circles as bullet points mm -hmm. help to guide the reader through your content. I like to use bullet points, for example, to really make it easily scannable and so, so that people can really, um, I'm drawing their attention to certain things that I'm writing about that are the key points. And um, I have had, people have commented to me that it really helps them and they're fun too. Like I, I, I use a little bit of humor when I, when I select the emojis that I use. Yeah. Well, it makes it more entertaining than just, yeah. but I, bullets are key. I, even when I'm writing emails to clients, I have to bullet stuff out. Cause if you ask way too many questions, they're never going to, they'll answer one of them. So <laughs> people also tend, link, you know, hi, tag people yeah. who you're mentioning in your posts. If I were to talk about today's, um, you know, the, the talk that we just had, I'm going to tag you on LinkedIn so that you'll see it. And hopefully you're going to share it with your followers too. Right, right, right. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Such oh, this is a pleasure. Have fun. Such great information. And so how do people find you? So you can, you can certainly reach out to me on LinkedIn, Julie Livingston, Want Leverage Communications, or you could go to my website, which is wantleverage.com. Okay, awesome. And I know we're going to, Christy is going to put that in the um, chat for us. To that would be great. You. So thank you guys so much for being here. Super excited to, uh, we're going to be doing more of these now coming up. I've got a bunch of people booked in, in the series here. So we're excited to get back into this. Um, here's the, I'm going to share this here so everybody can see how to get to you. Um, if you can't find it, reach out to us. We're happy to get you connected to Julie, but she's fantastic. I've known her for years and Julie, you and I need to talk because I need some help with my LinkedIn. Sounds great. Okay. Well, thanks <laughs> okay. so much for having me. All right, you guys. It's such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. All right, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you next week. Take care.